things. We've been talking about some differences between behavioral based safety and traditional safety. Uh, and there's a place for both of them. Let me just tell you, I've never seen a behavior based safety process or program that doesn't that works very well without a good traditional based safety to, to give it the background. You still have to have your facilities in place and your equipment in place and all the OSHA regulations working for you to really be very successful in getting a behavior-based safety process going. Okay. But that being said, it's just like anything else, like in your in your house, you still have to have other rules and things going on and guidelines rather than just saying we're gonna give consequences for everything, you have to still have some guidelines before before that happens and, and it gives you the structure to make things work. So okay. Uh, we talked about really the thing we're trying to affect when we're talking about the out of those three circles, when we're talking about behavior type modification, we're talking about number one is the capability, and that is that we're doing some training and education. If part of that's through the experience, and then we also are just really trying to affect the motivation. So, um, here's the video clip now. When the video clip starts, for some reason we can't get the sound to work. So let me tell you what's going to happen in the video clip. The lady puts money into a vending machine, and her her item that she selected gets stuck. Okay? You've all had that happen before, right? Okay? Gets stuck and she's gonna walk away, but then she has some some co-workers, some people, some counterparts to come up and encourage her to not to not walk away without getting what she wants. So you're gonna see that going on. And that's kind of funny because it's about your choices that you make and what are the consequences and sometimes what you go through to get the consequences. So We'll go ahead and play it a couple of times, but let's go ahead and, go ahead and watch it. Again, if you can play that one more time, that's uh, again, it's about behaviors, but it's about the consequences. She got the reward, right? So she got the consequence. Okay. So what does that what does that demonstrate? You think you're influenced by what other people think or what other people do? I think you are. There's a lot of peer pressure from time to time in doing the thing. So one of the things you, you want to do is really just set up to make sure your consequences avoid as much of that as you can. Okay, you just and you give them immediately. But the, you know, yeah, she got what she wants, she got her candy bar or whatever she was. She was going for it, but it took some help from her from her friends. So here's what we want to do. If we want to change performance, the first thing we need to do is this. We need to uh, figure out what behavior we want to address. Just like I did with my kids. What does good look like in your room? <laughs> what does good look like in the kitchen? What are the things you gotta do? So you gotta make sure you know what you want to address. What are the issues that you're having? What are the safety concerns that you have right now? What do you want to change? Okay, is everybody's safety process where, where, you, where you're at, exactly where you want it to be? If you've had any injuries, you probably it's not where you want it to be, true? Okay, so we need to do that. And then it's what you want to do is you want to start doing that, just like we do with my kids. We sat down and let them understand what good looked like. Good looked like, here's where we want the clothes to be. Here's what you want this to look like. Okay, so these are some of the basics, but if you, again, going back to our, to the training, he was talking about before, sometimes they don't know what the basics are. We think they do, and if you say, hey, do you know what safety looks like? Oh, yeah. You know you know how to drive that snow plow? Oh, yeah. 
You know how to do a pre-trip on that? Oh, yeah, I mean, I've been driven that for 20 years now. I don't, what do I need some training for, right? So, but you got to make sure you know what is you're looking for that you want to do. Make sure they understand what it does. And then you can set up your performance. What do you want it to look like when you get done? Okay. Realistically, are you going to hit 100% safe or 100% good on all your behaviors? Probably not realistic, but you're setting up the process. Could could happen. That's a good, that's that's your goal, that's your desire, right? But when you're gonna set a goal for people to reach, we always talk about in the behavior-based process, if you hit 95% or above as being good, that's what it because every once in a while there's gonna be one person. You're you you're trying you're trying for perfection. One person makes one mistake on the whole process, you're out of the game. True? You demotivate people then. So if you're looking for, we try to hit at least 95%, it'd be great to hit 100%. Don't get me wrong, and there's, there's weeks and there's times you will, but forever you probably won't happen. Okay? And then you decide what you want your performance to be again, and then um, what are the obstacles that you need? What do we need to do? Do we need to change our process? Do we need to add something? Do we need to make an environmental change to go through the process? Okay? So here's what we're going to do we're going to do an exercise. I need three volunteers. Okay, one Joe. Who's next? Come on, Joe. Three, come on, three volunteers. Jeff wants to go. Okay, thank you. Got okay. there's two. One more. Jeff over there. He wants one. Jeff. Jeff wants to Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for volunteering. Woo! -hoo. All right, I like that. Uh, the old system of being voluntold. That's a great process. Okay, I like I like how that goes. So if you three will Go to the back door there for just a second. <laughs> okay, we're going to we're going to do this exercise. This is an exercise where everyone's going to be involved. I need everyone's participation. Even the fish, they want help. They can, everybody can be involved in this presentation. So, uh, until he gets some out of your shot here. Okay, here's, here's what we're doing. We're gonna set this up where we're going to have each one of our participants take 15 pennies and pitch them into this box. We're doing all the exact same task. Okay, and I need another volunteer just to help me count and collect pennies. Anybody count? Okay, all right, thank you. So here, here, here's our goal. We're gonna bring each one of them in one at a time, blindfolded. Okay, now here's the key to this. If you'll come up, you can help me get out kind of some pennies. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to bring them up one at a time blindfolded. And we're going to, I've got this marked off. I've got some tape on the floor here. Where they're going to pick that box is 10 feet away. So I'm going to have them come up. I'm going to bring them up to the front. I'm going to spin them around three times, slowly. I'm going to have them face the box. And then I'm going to have them and give them each 15 pennies. I'm going to try and be as close to I can as word for word for each one of them so there's no different cues from, from me. And we're going to tell them what they need to do. We're going to have them pitch 15 pennies into that box. Okay. Here's, the, here's, the, here's where you come in. The first, first one. No sound. Zero feedback. I want them to think they're in another room. I want them to think that they that you guys have all left. And we've got them in a different room. I'm mean, literally no sound, no feedback at all. Okay? Second one we're going to bring in, we're going to have them come in, and we're going to give them nothing but negative feedback. Who dressed you this morning? You know, whatever. Keep it semi professional. <laughs> okay, but nothing, and I'm telling you, nothing but negative comments. Okay? And then the third one, we're going to give nothing but positive or appreciative comments. Even a little bit of coaching, okay, a little to the right, a little to the left, okay? We're gonna see how that affects not only you, 
but it fixed the people pitching the pennies. Okay? So again, the first one we're going to do what? Nothing. No sound. Absolute silence. Second one? Negative. Really negative. And we'll have a little bit of time to Really negative. <laughs> Nothing but negative. Now, if you want one positive comment, get semi professional, please. <laughs> okay? But it's okay to say if it's a guy, hey, did you get a purse with that blouse or whatever it can be, whatever you want to say. You can do something exciting. And then the third one, nothing but pause. As soon as they walk in the room, we're clapping, we're cheering, we're doing the right thing, okay? And if you would, I'm going to ask you to just like have a set of pennies. Okay, and then we'll try and clean them up a little bit as we go through, but if we don't get them all cleaned up, it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll be a big deal for them. We want to vacuum them up. All right, so what are we doing right now? Thank you. Have our first contestant? Yep, first contestant. Face me. I'm going to spin you around three times slowly. One, two, three. And I want you to come closer to me. I want you to slide your feet against till they hit my foot. Okay. Stand right there, okay? Are you right handed or left handed? Okay, grab your left hand. In your left hand, I'm placing 15 pennies. I'd like you to take them out one by one with your right hand and pitch them into a box. The box is 10 feet in front of you. It is 24 inches off the ground. The box is 8 inches wide, excuse me, 11 inches wide and 18 inches deep. Go. off the ground. <laughs> All right. At 30, 24 inches off the ground. All right, good. So, Joe, uh, go ahead and have a seat. Let me tell you what we're doing next. Okay, we're going to bring in the next contestant. Thank you. So, Joe, here's what we did for you. We had no feedback. Exact silence, right? Okay, for our next contestant, we're going to give them the exact same instructions. But we're going to give them, as soon as they walk in the door there, nothing but negative feedback. Negative. Nothing coaching, nothing constructive, but this negative feedback. 
Uh, from the minute they walk in the room, keep it semi-professional, we've talked to them about <laughs> okay. uh, you know, Name calling, again, for semi-professional <laughs> as you go through the process, and then we're going to that's what we're going to do. All the time, they're, every, when they're up here, the entire time they walk in the room until they get finished throwing the last pen. We want that to happen. Okay? Okay. We've got the next contestant. <laughs> By the way, I want you to think right now, how, how do you, how, Joe, you keep track of how you felt. You were, that's not going to be hard to forget. Okay? And for the rest of you, think how you felt when Joe was doing that. Okay, Jeff, go ahead and put that on. Make sure you can't see anything. I'm not to leave you in any doorways or not open the door for us. Getting dizzy. Probably need to do it one more time. Two. Yeah. Three. Okay, I'd like you to uh, slide your feet forward until they hit my foot. Okay. Well, both feet are squared up. Okay. okay. Are you right handed or left handed? Without your left hand. In your, in your left hand, I put down yeah, other 15 left. pins. I want you to take them out one by one with your right hand and pitch them into a box. There's a box 10 feet in front of you that's 24 inches high, 18 inches wide, 11 inches deep. Go. My feet is playing to him again. He's not very bright. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah, well. Yeah, well. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> What is wrong with that? I don't know. What do you mean? Oh, good God. Oh, he's not. Did you get a purse with that blouse or, or what? Or did you go through? I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, all right, thank you. Take out the phone both. Okay, ten feet from the end. Okay, um, Jeff, go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. Okay, let's give them a round of applause. Okay. So, Jeff, we had we had different experience for you than we did for Joe. We got another experience for. I don't know the lady's name was coming. Carla. Carla? Okay. So for Carla, okay, and here, for Carla, here's what we want to do. We want to, from the time she walks in, we want to do nothing but positive. Yay, here's our champion. Oh, she can do it. Uh, we can give her some coaching, a little bit, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, a little bit farther. Our goal is to get them actually into the box. Okay? So, I mean, the first two. But we're going to get them into the box, right? We're going to see how that goes. So, Again, nothing but positive from the time she walks in.
need anything. Okay, all right, here, I got you. Okay, Brock can open the door for us. Yay! There she is! Wow! Awesome! You're gonna do great, Carla. You look yeah, at I feel like a lamb at the slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll walk through these two tables here. So. You are totally going to do better than I do. Yeah. Totally. Carla, stretch out your throwing arm. Just walk around my dad's seat. Just about there. Sure. She can do it. I'm going to spin you around three times. One, two, <laughs> and three. So face me, okay? So what I can do is I want you to slide your feet on the ground until they hit my foot. Okay, now square up. Face me straight on, okay? Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Okay, put your left hand out. In your left hand, I'm putting 15 pins. I'd like you to take them out one by one with your right hand and pitch them into a box. The box is 10 feet in front of you. The top of the box is 24 inches off the ground. The box is 18 inches wide and 11 inches deep. Go. Throw it further than you think. Throw it further. Further. Under. Oh, not so far. Not so far. Oh, a little bit shorter, shorter. So, soft, soft. Oh, almost soft. A little bit soft. Just a little bit to your right. A little bit to your right. A little bit to your right. Oh, yeah! 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 Short. No further. A little bit farther. A little bit farther. A little bit shorter. A little bit shorter to your right. consequences when we're talking about behaviors. It's not always a steak dinner or $100 or anything. The best feedback, according to psychologists, is that the people get the feedback verbal, one on one. That means the most to them. They don't mind getting a t-shirt or a drink or something, but they like that personal feedback from whether it's their spouse, their kids, their wife, their mom, their dad. Okay. Uh, Anybody, if they give them the feedback, that makes a big difference, okay? So, yeah, it's okay, we'll find them later on. Thank you very much. Let's give a hand to our... Okay, so here's what we did. We had all three of you, for you to know, had all three of you do the exact same task. I tried to give you the exact same instructions. We put you in the exact same position, spun you all around three times, never moved the box. First couple of times we didn't even have to worry about moving the box, but any pennies around it, okay? <laughs> but that's okay. That's just the way it is. And everybody comes in with a different skill set, true? Okay. As you go through the process, so and then they go by experience what's going on. So they adjust for their experience and their coaching. So first first person came in was Joe. Joe, how did you feel? So what did you end up doing? You just did. I didn't change anything. You didn't. Yeah, you just did what you felt comfortable with, thinking I'm, I'm doing all right. Did you get any feedback? I got a snicker. Okay, you got a snicker. That's why. That's why. 
Okay. Sometimes we get feedback if the if the penny hits the box. Okay. You hit the chair once, right? So what did you do? Then you you were pretty close. After that, you you you, you adjusted a little bit. You know, almost everything was very close. That same area after that. So you got some feedback from the process. Wasn't from people, but it was from the process. When you deal with people who are doing manufacturing, you know, you have this thing and you go along and you're making 100 widgets an hour or something and the machine goes ka-chink, ka-chink, clunk. Ah, okay. You get feedback. So the process sometimes can give us feedback all by itself. So how did you feel about that? Positive or, or not a positive experience for you? But what you did do, you, you, you said, you know, you're the type of person that says, hey, I'm just going to continue on and do, do this anyway, right? I'm going to finish, going to hold it out, stick it out, we're going to make it work, do the best I can. Okay. Does everybody have that same personality? No, well, some people, if they after, literally, some people, they just stop. Or sometimes they'll take all, what's ever left, to just throw them all at one time, because they don't know what, you know, they're, they're waiting, so... You know, you were more of a strong personality, going to make it happen and make it work. So I appreciate that. So you didn't. That wasn't necessarily a positive experience. It wasn't necessarily negative, but it wasn't a positive. Correct. How did you feel as a group? We wanted to help him. Exactly. We wanted him to feel loved. Well, I won't go that far. No, okay. No, actually, you know that, that that's true. We would. You know, normally we have somebody on our team, we want to help them. We do want to give them feedback, okay? We do want to give them feedback, and sometimes the hardest thing we can do is say nothing and do nothing. Have you ever walked away from something where you didn't say anything and said, I probably should have said something to that person? Okay? That's the toughest part we have, and we have to live with that, is we don't give any feedback, okay? Um, out in the world, as a general thing for manufacturing, and in the industrial world, about 70% of the, of the bosses give their employees zero feedback on a day-to-day -day basis. When do you think they come and talk to their employees? When something goes wrong. Which brings us right to our next contestant. <laughs> okay. So is what, we, is what we did. Remind me of your name again. Jeff. Jeff. So was always, what we did with Jeff is what? We gave him negative, nothing but negative feedback. How'd you feel about that, Jeff? It was hard. I felt bad about myself. <laughs> 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 you know, I'll tell that, okay, this is an exercise, it's a game, and it's not that big a deal. Like, I hope these people don't feel this way about me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we're not going to tell you whether they do or don't, but you know, he did exactly. But, so it really wasn't a positive experience for you, was it? Okay. How did you feel as a group? At first, it's kind of fun a little bit, right? But the fun wears off. Okay. Fun wears off usually. You know, making fun of somebody or, or saying negative things, that's what the world does. You turn on the news. How much of the news is positive? Maybe 5%. I mean, really, everything's negative. Here's what bad happened today in the world. Okay, here's how many people died. Here's where the road washed out. Here's where, I mean, whatever, right? It, it, okay, it's, all, it's pretty much negative stuff. So we're used to it. That doesn't mean we like it. And we usually participate in it at first, but it gets, it gets old pretty fast. Okay? Okay? Oh, by the way, Joe, how many uh, pennies did you get in the box? Zero. Okay, good. Joe, how many times did you hit the box? Okay, good. Uh, Jeff, how many times did you, how many times did you get in the box? Zero. Okay, and how many times did you hit the box? Zero. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going there, but yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it just is, okay, and part of that skill set, I've actually had this, done this once, where the person who had uh, no feedback at all got 12 out of 15 in the box. But he was a semi-professional softball pitcher. So he knew what 10, when 10 feet was, he just, that was just an easy thing to do. So sometimes you overcome 
what you don't know either by your experience or your skills, even if it's negative or no feedback, okay? All right, so then we had Carla. Carla came in, and well, what did we do with Carla? Cheered her on. Oh, she's not breaking the candy machine, but she, okay, we cheered her on, did <laughs> the right things, right? And uh, how did you feel about that, Carla? <laughs> and, but but it never happened, did it? Yeah. So that's a so was that a positive experience for you overall? Yeah, it was because coming in, I got this, this disoriented. Mm -hmm. And I could tell when I was coming in, I could tell from people saying stuff where I was at. Okay. Which kind of helped. All right, awesome. And, and that was calming. Okay, great. And how did we feel as a group? How did you feel as a group? Good. Excited. For the, for the first one, did you do when you were giving her help? Was that was that a good thing? You like that? I wanted her to slow down so we can okay. give her more, you know. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So you know. Okay, and here's what happens, right? You get you you want to get people help. Do they always listen or do they always understand what you mean? No. And then they may or may not. But it could be a positive experience. Okay. Carla, how many pennies do you get in the box? I think there was two or three or five. Well, okay, and then you hit the box another time. So results. Let's talk about results. From from zero feedback, our results were zero. From negative feedback, our results were zero. Okay, big improvement. Five hundred percent improvement right there by just giving positive feedback. Okay. So we talk about behavior-based safety. Our process is this. It's not to beat the people up. Our process is to try and encourage them, reinforce that they're doing the right things. Okay, when you when you got a penny in the box, you, you knew that. Besides the cherry, you could hear that, right? You got that feedback from the process. How'd that feel? I thought, okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Give you a little bit of confidence so you're gonna go on and keep on doing things, okay? So that's how this works. This penny fish exercise is awesome. Okay, and it works for all kinds of things we're doing. Okay, so our feedback makes the biggest difference. Remember we talked about consequences king before? When we're talking about behavior-based safety, we're talking about communication with people, our feedback to them, what we tell them, is king. Okay, how we say it to them, what we say to them, makes all the difference in the world. Uh, some people just overcome a lot of obstacles and be very successful regardless of the negative or the no feedback. But the people who are most successful are people who get more feedback. How about, how about when they score a touchdown in a football game? What happens? Everybody's quiet, doesn't do it. They go, go, they go crazy, right? Jumping all over and doing all that. Okay, that's, you think that motivates people? Absolutely. Okay, so when we give people positive feedback, that's what they're looking for. And if we want to reinstall, when they're trying to get something right, it's easy to see what goes wrong. We've talked about that before. You, you can tell what safety looks like when, you, when they're doing it, right? Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, that's not right. Oh boy, I'm going to stand back over here. That's not right. <laughs> right? Okay? But when they're doing it right, what do, we, what do we say to them usually? Because again, 70% of our, of our bosses out there in the world give us feedback, either no feedback or feedback only when it's negative, right? When there's a problem going on. But if you look at the great motivators, uh, there's a lot of study in uh, people like uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, John Wood. What kind of things do they do? When they got it right, they made sure that people knew it right. Correct? And if you read up on John Wood, pretty, pretty amazing uh, thing. He wasn't always the success that he ended up being. He worked through that. He did that by, number one, getting his antecedents right. First day of practice, no matter whether you were a uh, Lou Alcindor, anybody know who Lou Alcindor was? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, <laughs> he his name after that came It was Lou Alcindor when he was, when he was at the UCLA, right? And uh, whether you're Lou Alcindor or Gail Goodrich or somebody else that was really good and famous or the newest recruit that walked in as a freshman, everybody got the same instruction the first day of camp. First day of training, what day would he say? Walked over, and picked up a basketball and said, this is a basketball. 
Wow, what a surprise, huh? But that's how his antecedents went. He didn't, he didn't miss any details. He spent a half hour showing them how to properly put on their socks and shoes. Why is that important? It does. They're running up and down all the time. What happens if you've got your socks and shoes not on right? What happens if you get blisters on your feet? Are you a good? Are you as good a player at that point? So he went through all the bases. He did those antecedents just like that. He said, "Here's how you put on your sock. I want you to do this, and I want you to do that. I want you to make sure. I want you to smooth that out." It, it was pretty amazing stuff. And it sounds pretty basic and pretty maybe you know oversimplified, but he didn't leave anything to chance. That's why he, they they won ten championships in eleven years. Okay, because of the, he did that. And when they did things right, you watch them on the sideline. When they come back in, he talked to his players. And he, good job with that. Hey, I appreciate you doing a good job with that screen. It wasn't always the guy who scored it, but the guy who set the screen for the guy who went around and scored the game. You know, the, the bucket, that's the things that are going on. Do we do that in our lives? Should we do that in our lives? <laughs> So when you go back to work, you're doing things you want people to be safe when they're doing something right, when they get it right, tell them, good job. Be specific. Don't just say good job. What I'm doing, you want to be specific. So good job is better than no feedback at all. True? You guys like it when someone comes in and says, hey, good job? What if they said good job when they tell you exactly something very specific? Makes you feel even better. And now... Are you more or less likely to do that again? More likely. Hey, good job of getting that report in. You mean you, you got that report in you know, two days early. That gave me a chance to look at it, and it really made a difference to the... You can send reports in two days early every time? Yeah, every time. That's how it works. Okay. What about being specific when you're given other type of feedback? So there's a difference between negative feedback and constructive feedback. Let's say they, they're, they're doing something wrong. They're, they're, they're trying to go up two stairs at a time. Instead of one, like we talked about before. Sounds like a small thing. So you just yell at them. Or do you say, hey, you know, here's me here, here's find a better way. I know you're using two stairs. I know you got long legs and all that. Better put your center balance off. If there's ever any water on the steps, you're, you're going to have some problems because you'll be off balance. The body won't be, the center of gravity will be way off out of line up here. So I'd like you to just do that. Can you just go up one step at a time and do it? So you can coach them. There's a difference between coaching and negative feedback. That's why we coach Carter, right? A little bit farther to your right, a little bit, a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. That's coaching. That's okay. They didn't get it right. We're going to help them. You okay with that? It really helps. Okay, and it is helpful, you know. I look at it like this. Let's say I go home tonight. I'll give you an off the job example. Let's say I go home uh, tonight and, and I open up the dishwasher, call my daughter over. Yeah, she's 24. Yeah, she, and it's her assignment to do the dishwasher. We all have a task in our house. That's just the way it is. That's, that's our ground rules. It doesn't make any difference. It's not, don't give me this, it's a girl. Thing. It's not, it's, everybody's got assignments. Hers just happens to be the dishwasher. So let's say I open up the dishwasher and I say, hey, you didn't load that right. Is that good feedback for her? Let me ask you this. How many ways could she load that dishwasher? Thousands of ways, right? A fork, a spoon, a cup, a knife. I mean, she could do anything in the world in that dishwasher. But what if I said to her, hey, next time, here's what I'd like you to do. Next time, when you get to load the dishwasher, I want you to put the plates right here, the bowls over here, the cups up here, silverware over here. That's the coaching part. So when you give feedback to somebody, if they're not doing it correctly, we want to coach them and do it the right way. Okay? You okay with that? All right. Now, I use this penny pitch exercise a lot. Uh, I, I, I do this with youth groups, too. And I sometimes I'll have the parents in one room do one, and I'll have the kids in another room do one. And when I get them all back together, we talk about the same thing. We know what, how did you feel, what was that like? Then we ask him this, so, so Joe, your daughter came home from school. She had an A, two Bs, three Cs, and two Fs. What are you going to talk to her about first, Joe? I want to talk to her first about the 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Is that guilty as charged? I mean, I don't know, okay. Okay, is that the right way to work on that? I mean, you know, shouldn't you spend just as much time as, hey, how did you get an A in, in geometry? How did you get a B in, in physics or whatever? Now, why'd you get this F in, in, in English, right? That's it. Yeah, so try to do four to one. Yeah, that's really good. Four, four to five to one is a good ratio. But the thing is, when you got to talk to them, make sure you talk to them about the good things too. Make sure you talk to them about those things. We talked about that. When, you know, when I talk to the youth groups, I do the same thing. I say, hey, you know, how many of you, and I, I, you know, I, I usually spend a little bit of time beforehand and I see how they interact and they run around and how they're making fun of, of Susie or, or Billy or whoever it is. And then I talk to them about that at the end. They say, well, do you think you can get him to change by, by making fun of him, or do you think you can get him to change by helping him? And it makes a big difference. And it helps, hopefully helps the youth groups get, get used to helping each other and make, make things happen. So, penny picks exercise, you like it? Make a difference? Okay, that's all good stuff. So, let's talk about some, some things. So, from a behavior-based safety standpoint, let's take a look. Here is a very simple form that was put together by one company. I'm not telling you the company, but they just said, look, we're gonna sit down, here are our issues. We're a heavy manufacturing company. We've got a lot of machines that throw sparks and dirt and grit and, and metal all over the place. So what do we need to worry about? So they said, we're gonna pick out five things. Thing number one is, do we have our clear aisleways? Or we have all the parts and all the things so you can't you can't walk up and down the aisleways, you can't get to your machines. Okay? They also the next thing they said, are you wearing your safety glasses? Okay? Next thing they said it was an issue because they would have a lot of eye injuries. They had 28 eye injuries in one year. That's a lot, isn't it? Okay. Um, and then they said, What about wearing safety shoes? They're around a lot of heavy equipment, a lot of heavy metals and things like that, heavy things. So they just put together a checklist that had safety shoes on. And then when they had a lot of overhead cranes to move these big parts they were machining and milling and, and forming around, so they, when they were using that crane, they should be wearing a hard hat, right? Okay. And then they said, do you wear gloves when you're doing material handling so you don't cut your hand? So they put together five things that were important to them, made it very simple, and they said, either safe or at risk. They started this out by having their management go out. So the supervisor, you'd go out there, you'd go through your area, and you'd say, uh, yep, safety glasses, safety shoes, uh, not, he's not using no red crane, I don't worry about that, but he's handling things, he's got his gloves on. Well, she's using no red crane, does she have a hard hat on, she's doing that, and you went right down the list. So it's either safe or a risk. That's how easy it is, it's not, most of these things when you do behavior-based safety, it's, it's, a, it's pretty easy, it's black and white. It's not, it would have been safe if it wasn't Tuesday afternoon and he wanted to go home. Or if he didn't show up late, there's no qualifiers. It's either safe or risk, okay? So when you're talking about behavior-based safety, that's black and white. Either they did or didn't do that regardless of the situation. Okay, then at the end, they went week by week. They set themselves some goals. Then remember I said we don't set our goal at 100%. They didn't set their goal at 100%. They set their goal at 90%. We got people back there having fun, so, okay. But here's what we got, so we went, and so then they did a tally week by week, how they were doing, what they were, how they were making things happen. And that was as easy as it was. How long do you think it takes to do a checklist and walk through your area to do this? Not very long, okay? If you're gonna give feedback to people, it may take one or two minutes of a person. Hey, good job of using your glove. I know you're returning handling, good job with that. And I see you using your red brain, got your heart head on, liking that. That's gonna help you go home today. You won't have anything hit you in the head, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So you can talk.